Hi guys, Scott Polk here from Apex Tactical Specialties. Today I want to talk about lubrication of your semi-auto pistol. Remember, there are a lot of makes and models out there, but they're all pretty much the same when it comes to the way they work and the way they function, so we're going to go over lubrication of a handful of models. Before we get into the what to lubricate, where to lubricate, how to lubricate, we're going to go over what not to use. So, let's talk about what to use, what not to use for a second here. Don't use uh, Crisco, don't use uh, you know uh, vegetable oil, all the kind of stuff you cook with. That's not appropriate. Bacon grease, bad idea. Uh, what you should use is a gun grade lubricant, greaser oil. Doesn't matter what, doesn't matter what brand. Pick one that's designed for firearms because those lubricants are going to be more specialized to the right temperature ranges and the right types of friction. So again, gun grade lubricants. Doesn't matter what kind you use. Pick one or two and go with it. So the big question is, where do I lubricate my slide? The answer is only on the disconnector notch. So we'll use these for an example here. On the Hellcat, you have a disconnector notch right back here. On the MP, this is your disconnector here. On the 509, this is your disconnect. And on the SIG P320s, this is your disconnect. Those are the only places you want to lubricate on a slide. If you're worried about lubricating the rails, we do that on the frame, not the slide itself. Some of you might be asking why I don't recommend lubing the rails inside the slides. Well, the reason for that is we want to lubricate the frame, not the slide. So we don't add any grease or oil to the slides except from the disconnect notches. We'll do that on the frame only. Modern striker fired pistols all have a vent hole in the bottom of the slide. You can see here on the Hellcat, it has a little tiny hole here for venting the striker. You have the same thing on the MMP, FN509, and there's even one on the center of this model of the SIG P320. More modern SIGs have it over on the side as well. But they all have the same feature. They all have a vent for debris and moisture clearance out of the striker channel. Do not lubricate that. This is not a lube hole, this is a clearance. Keep that clean and dry so that you don't have a problem. One of the biggest mistakes we see with new gun owners is lubricating the striker. Here you have a Hellcat striker, an M&P striker, 509, and P320. Each of these came out of the gun as they're supposed to be. You can tell there's no lubricant on them. They're all clean and dry. This is how they should be installed in the pistols. The reason you don't want to lubricate the strikers is that you'll capture dirt and debris around the parts of the striker that have to move around inside the slide. What will happen is you will basically cause light strikes because you'll get stuff built up in there and you could cause a hydraulic cylinder which will cause light strikes too. To lubricate your frame I recommend lubricating the four slide contact points as well as the locking block itself. So we'll go over that now. I'll put a little drop of grease or oil right on top of the rail itself. I'll use my finger and I'll push away and I'll drag it back. The oil will go around the outside of that rail and go underneath. I'll do that on all the points in the frame so that everything gets a nice layer of lubricant. Pull away, push in, same thing over here, get underneath, and then on the back as well. This puts lubrication underneath where you need it for the slide to hit it. We're also going to put another drop or two on top of the locking block. Not quite enough there. There we go. We'll push forward and bring it underneath and that'll lubricate where the barrel unlocking happens. You also want to make sure you lubricate the disconnector in, in the guns. This one is on the FN509, it's right here. Other guns have it in a different spot. So make sure you have some lube on there and on the slide that mates up to it. So for example, on the Hellcat, we'll do the two locking block rails and the locking block center itself, as well as the rails on both sides. On the M&P, we'll do the locking block rails and the locking block center, as well as both rails on the back on the sear housing block. On the FN509, sear housing block rails, locking block rails on the front, as well as the center of the locking block. And on the SIG, the frame rails at the front, the frame rails at the back, and then the pin in the middle, which acts as a locking block on these pistols. So I want to go over lubrication of the barrel next. This is a barrel for the Hellcat, but your barrel might be longer or look a little bit different, but it's all really the same principle. We'll first start with putting a little bit of oil or grease on the front of the barrel right at the top. And I'll run that around 360 degrees, around roughly the end three quarters of an inch of the barrel. I'll take what's left on my finger and I'll lubricate right here in the unlocking geometry on the front of the barrel. That's your primary locking surface for slide stop. On the bottom, I'm going to put a couple drops underneath the, the feed ramp itself. I'll take some of that and put it underneath the locking geometry too. That's all you need for lubricant on a semi-auto pistol barrel, so don't over lubricate. And remember, firearms grade lubricant. There's a lot of them out there. Pick one. As you can see here, we have a handful of manufacturers. They're all roughly the same when it comes to lubrication, the what and the where and the how. So at the end, what you need to remember is keep the striker channel clean and dry, lubricate the right components like we talked about, and make sure that you don't over lubricate. 